Okay, so welcome to the second video on function spaces. In this video, we're going to take the same set, we're going to take the set CAB again, but we're going to define a different metric on it. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take F and G as elements of CAB. Uh, so uh, they're both continuous functions on the interval AB, and we're going to define the distance between F and G by uh, the integral over A, B of uh, f of x of the mod of f of x minus g of x dx, and uh, so if we uh, if we um, look back at our picture, uh, so here we have a picture of an f and a g, and we drew a picture of mod of f x minus g uh, mod, uh, minus g. Uh, so basically, the integral over a b will be the area under this curve. So that is something that is going to be well defined and it is going to be a positive real number. So. Uh, that's the first thing that we need to check to make sure that it's a metric space. So we need to check that the distance between f and g is an element of the real numbers. Well, it's an element of the non-negative real numbers. And I should have just said, uh, the reason we know that it's going to be... Uh, firstly, the fa firstly, I should have said, uh, in, this, in this definition we are uh, thinking of the integration, integration in the Riemann sense. Uh, we're not necessarily thinking of it in the Lebesgue sense. Uh, so uh, you can just think of it as being a Riemann integral. Riemann integral would do for this. Um, and uh, the integral over AB uh, is going to be defined uh, because it's a continuous function. Mod of, fx, mod of fx minus gx is a continuous function, therefore its Riemann integral will be defined. Uh, so firstly, we're going to check that the distance between f and g is an element of the non-negative real numbers. Well, we know that f of x minus g of x is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, so that implies that uh, the Riemann integral between a and b of mod of fx minus gx uh, dx uh, is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, the reason being that if you go back to the uh, basic definition of the Riemann integral as being uh, the infinum over all dissections of the upper Riemann sum of this function, which shall we call this function something, we'll call it something, we'll call it uh, no, I don't want to call it... Uh, let's call it d of x. Uh, so the upper Riemann sum of, of over that dissection of d of x uh, being equal to the supremum over all dissections of the lower Riemann sum of over that dissection of d of x. If we take that as our definition of uh, Riemann integration, uh, then basically all of these upper Riemann sums and lower Riemann sums are going to be greater than or equal to zero because the function is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, so all of these sums, so uh, the upper Riemann sum of the, over the dissection d of x is going to be greater than or equal to zero. Similarly, the lower Riemann sum over all dissections of d of x is going to be greater than or equal to zero because uh, d of x itself is greater than or equal to zero everywhere. Uh, so remember the upper Riemann sum over a dissection d was defined to be equal to uh, the sum uh, of i is equal to 1 to n, where the dissection goes from 1 to n, um, of, um, of um, x i uh, minus x i minus 1 uh, times the supremum over x is an element of x i minus 1 to x i of um, f of x. And the lower Riemann sum was exactly the same thing, but the infinum here. So basically, these are all going to be positive. These are certainly positive. Uh, so we're going to be adding up lots of positive numbers. Well, non-negative numbers, rather. And um, we will therefore get a non-negative number. So if you take the supremum of a set of non-negative numbers or, or, or the infinum of a set of non-negative numbers, you're going to get a non-negative number. So this has to be non-negative as well. So the Riemann integral is going to be greater than or equal to zero. Second property... Uh, that uh, the uh, distance between f and f is going to be equal to zero. So that's pretty obvious because uh, if we look at the definition of the distance between f and f, it's going to be the integral from a to b of uh, f of x minus f of x, uh, the modulus of that. So f of x minus f of x is just going to be identically zero along uh, the interval a, b. So we're going to put zero in there. The modulus of zero is still zero, so we're going to be integrating zero. So the area under that curve is going to be equal to zero. 
and it's most easy to uh, see these uh, properties by just thinking of the integrals, the area under the curve, rather than trying to prove them directly from the um, uh, from the definition of the Riemann integral. Uh, so uh, three. Uh, oh, we've missed a part. We want to show that if the distance between f and g is equal to zero, that that implies that f is identical to g. So if it is so that the integral is equal to zero, uh, well, we get that the integral between a and b of f minus g at dx is equal to zero. Uh, so uh, that implies uh, that um, if, you ha if f minus g is non-negative, f minus g is always greater than or equal to zero, and you are integrating it up to get zero, how can you get, uh, if you've got a, a, basically, if you imagine a graph, um, so if you've got a, b here, and you've got some function here that is non-negative, it can never go below the um, x-axis, then the only way that you can get an area under that curve to equal zero is for it to identically be equal to zero, which means that f minus g must equal zero, well, the modulus of f minus g must equal zero everywhere, which implies that f minus g is equal to zero everywhere, which implies that f is equal to g everywhere. So that one holds. Then we get that the distance between f and g uh, is equal to the distance between g and f. That again holds for the same reasons we've seen before. Uh, the distance between f and g is the integral between a and b of the modulus of f minus g dx. Uh, but the um, absolute value sign does not care uh, whether we subtract uh, g from f or uh, f from g. So this is equal to the integral from a to b of g minus f uh, dx, which is equal to the distance between g and f. So it's symmetric. Now all we need to make sure is that it obeys the triangle inequality. So the triangle inequality then. So uh, let H be another element of C, A, B. And uh, we know that the distance between F and G is equal to the integral between A and B of um, F minus G dx. And I'm just dropping the F of X minus G of X because that takes quite a while to write out. Uh, so uh, pull our trick again. Uh, the integral between A and B um, of f minus h plus h minus g dx. You can't stop me from doing that once again. And then what I can say is that f minus h plus h minus g is less than or equal to f minus h plus h, the absolute value of h minus g, because uh, the modulus of a plus b is less than or equal to the modulus of a plus the modulus of b. So I just view f minus h as being a, and I view h minus g being as b. So, um, we're, it's another theorem from, uh, from um, real analysis about Riemann integrals, that the integral of a, b of um, something here, so if I integrate f minus h plus h minus g dx, then because of this inequality, the, uh, re the process of integration respects uh, the process of the inequality, so it's going to be less than or equal to the integral between a and b of f minus h plus h minus g uh, dx and then another basic property of the Riemann integral that it splits up so basically we're saying um, the intuitive reason that this is true is that if you imagine the picture between of the uh, function uh, this side is always going to be greater than or equal to this side so we have one function here and then we have another function here which is always going to be greater than or equal to that side so it might be equal to it at a few points but it's always greater than or equal to it so the area under that other under this one is going to be greater than or equal to the area under this lower one basically is what that is saying then basically uh, we know that uh, the um, integral is a linear property so it's splits into the integral between a and b of f minus h dx plus the integral between a and b of h minus g dx uh, and this is equal to the distance between f and h and this is equal to the distance between h and g so we get therefore that the distance between f and g is less than or equal to the distance between f and h plus the distance between h and g. So there's another way of defining a metric on uh, the uh, set of functions C, A, B.